Hello everyone, welcome to the National Seniors Day celebration. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge that the land we are privileged to live, work and play on is located on the unceded traditional lands of the Coast Salish people, including the Katsi, Kwantlen and Semiamu First Nations. At the City of Surrey, we support healthy, active aging through the Age-Friendly Strategy for Seniors, a framework that ensures seniors, families and caregivers are supported through advocacy, policy, partnering and service delivery. Today, we're excited to celebrate with you as we enjoy a great lineup of guest presenters and a favourite local band that we are sure you will enjoy. To open our program, we are pleased to welcome Mayor Doug McCallum, to share a few words. Hello everyone and happy Seniors Day. Every day, but especially today, we reflect, acknowledge, and appreciate the contributions that seniors make in our communities. Surrey has hundreds of dedicated seniors who volunteer their time to build healthy, and socially connected communities. In fact, many of our parks and recreation services are made possible with the dedication of these volunteers. At the City, we strive to provide age-friendly programs and services to promote health and wellness through our active living. I encourage you all to learn about Surrey's affordable fitness, wellness, recreation, volunteer, and social opportunities that ensure our seniors stay well connected. Today, I ask that you also take a moment to reach out to a senior in your life and let them know how much you appreciate them. Through this time of pandemic, it is especially important to stay connected with each other. I now invite you to enjoy our Seniors Day program with inspiring guest speakers and a great musical performance. Enjoy the show and we hope to see you soon. We start our program with guest speaker Renee Sarajoni Saklakar, who will talk about the power of story to connect, belonging and mentoring. Renee is a poet and creative writing instructor who lives in Vancouver. She is the author of four books, including the groundbreaking poetry book, Children of Air India, about the bombing of Air India Flight 182, which won the Canadian Authors Association Poetry Prize, and is the co-author with Dr. Mark Winston of the poetry and essay collection, Listening to the Bees, winner of the 2019 Gold Medal Independent Publishers Book Award, Environment and Ecology. Her newest book is Brahma and the Beggar Boy, an epic fantasy in verse. Themes include climate change and global inequality and feature strong female characters, including grandmothers and aunties. Born in India, Renee grew up in towns across Canada before settling in New Westminster. She was the first poet laureate for the city of Surrey. Good morning, everyone. I'm Renee Saragini Saklakar. I'm an author, educator, and lawyer, and from 2015 to 2018, I was Surrey's first Poet Laureate. I'm honoured to be here on the traditional territories of the Coast Salish people speaking virtually to you for this event on National Seniors Day. The overall theme of my talk today is the power of story to connect. And there are two things I'd like you to think about in relation to this theme of story and connection, belonging and mentoring. The first one, belonging. What does it mean to belong to a place, to a community? What role can seniors play in creating a sense of belonging rather than isolation? And when do we feel we most belong? What kind of places and peoples bring us together? And do you see yourself in a role where you might help others to get this feeling of belonging? And the second thing I'd like you to think about is mentoring. I think as we get older, we don't always realize the power of sharing our own story and the way that our stories can empower ourselves, maybe to heal old wounds, maybe to make peace with the past, and also to support others 
our own peers, ourselves, self-care, and also maybe people who are younger than ourselves. So those two things, belonging and mentoring in this overall theme of the power of story to connect. A little bit about me. I was born in India and came to Canada as a little girl. Now my family has lived all across the country from Newfoundland to New Westminster and that's where we finally settled and I have deep connections to North Surrey. Well, we used to call it Wally. I guess it's Central Surrey now. My dad was one of the first South Asians to be ordained as a United Church minister. He's passed away now, but he was well known in New Westminster. And my mum, although university educated, chose to be a homemaker and taught cooking classes at night school and worked as a baker at Century House in New Westminster. Like many immigrants, my, par my parents sacrificed a lot. They encountered race and class challenges, no doubt about it. But on the whole, they were very proud to be Canadian, even as they came to grips with the problems and challenges and fractures and wounds of being settlers in um, this country and everything that has gone on with our Indigenous peoples they were still really feeling that Canada was a kind of paradise. And that in part was because they went against their own cultures to get married. So they kind of fled to Canada. And one of the things they did is they took risks. They were both intent on belonging to this new country and they were really open to mentors. And because of this attitude, I was really privileged, even though I didn't have grandparents immediately close by or a great connection of kinship of aunts and uncles that were my biologically related relatives. I had aunties, two of whom I want to speak just very briefly about. They were both seniors and they're both passed away now, but they had a huge influence in my upbringing. One was Anita Hagen. She was a former minister of education. She was even a minister responsible for seniors in the past in this province. And she was a mom and she was a school trustee. And my dad was a school trustee and I got to know her. She taught me a lot about being organized, preparing for meetings, giving speeches. Um, I, I worked for her for a time. She was an amazing person. And the second senior that was in my life, who just passed away very recently, was a woman named Jerry Mercer, a strong social activist, passionate about social justice, about fighting for the environment. She taught me about organizing, about speaking truth to power. I miss both these women very much. And they're not biologically related to me, but they were huge mentors in how I developed as a woman. And I share this because as your first Poet Laureate from 2015 to 2018, I was asked to work on a legacy project, something that would last after my tenure. And this whole idea of the powers of story to connect us, belonging and mentoring, that's part of my upbringing as I've shared, became the cornerstone for the project. And the project was Surrey Stories Connect, a little book that's available through your public library in Surrey. And what I did is I brought, working with the Surrey libraries and many seniors and teens, I brought Surrey seniors and teens together. And in the year of 2016, we did three writing workshops, one in Cloverdale at the library there, one at the PIC Seniors Centre, Progressive Intercultural Seniors Centre, and mainly South Asians of many different cultures. And then our final writing workshop was at Historic Stewart Farm. And I'm going to talk just a little bit about what we did in the hopes that you might take some tips and tricks about how powerful writing can be in terms of getting your story so that you can belong and you can mentor or be mentored by someone else. And the key writing prompt we used at all three locations was I remember when. And we talked about places, people, things. For instance, at Historic Stewart Farm, we had a set of implements the staff there brought out in that wonderful old um, kitchen and with the iron stove. And they brought out things like apple peeler and a coffee grinder, many kitchen implements. And so then I had the seniors write their memories when they looked at these objects. Anyone can do this, you know. You can take a walk and think about the things that you miss about your neighborhood or things you love, maybe an old tree or a farm. You can talk about the implements from your kitchen or your home that you cherish and that have stories. One of the things that was so interesting in this project was that when we brought the seniors together to write this way or to orally be interviewed as we did with some of the South Asians, they love this prompt, I remember. And then of course we had the youth 
and the youth would listen to the seniors' stories and share their reactions and thoughts. And so there was a coming together, an intergenerational, multicultural coming together. It was really empowering. And that's really my key message. Here in Surrey, where we have a very diverse community, what can seniors do to feel both self-cared and empowered themselves, but also to mentor and reach out to others? Your story matters. That's my main message for for you today. And I'm so honored to be able to share a little. You can find this book, as I said, at the Surrey Libraries. I hope you'll take a look. I hope you get lots of ideas for ways you might write your own story. And to sum up, it's about belonging and mentoring and how these can bring about through story and the stories we share, I remember when, powerful connections. And these connections can heal and they can make us stronger and build our communities better. Congratulations to everyone for being part of this event. I'm grateful to be able to share these stories with you today. Take care, all best. Thank you, Renee, for sharing a great message on writing and remembering. We're all familiar with stories and their potential power. Next, find out how we can all benefit when you tap into your power as a storyteller with Noel Bentley. As a speaker, MC, and comedian, Noel challenges and entertains audiences with his unique perspectives, ability to connect ideas, and offbeat humor. He believes in the critical importance of creating connections and sparking public discussion as catalysts for change. Noel is the MC and Program Coordinator for TEDx Surrey. He's a distinguished Toastmaster and has created a public speaking project designed to change how we create experienced keynote talks. Currently, Noel is the speaking and storytelling coach for the Surrey Shares program, which helps participants to uncover and tell their stories. His recent volunteer work includes teaching photography and creating a program to help newcomers to Canada find and keep employment. As a child, did you ever take a story you just had to finish? You're supposed to be in bed, so you get under the covers, you get a flashlight, you start reading it, your mom comes in, what are you doing? Nothing? Well, of course, you can see your whole sheet's being <laughs> illuminated by the flashlight, but it's a good thing. Stories are important for us. We sit around campfires late at night, sharing stories the way we have for tens of thousands of years. And now, with the proliferation of internet access, you can read and listen and watch people tell stories, millions upon millions upon millions of them. That's because humans are at base. We are essentially storytellers. You are a storyteller. And those stories are important to us because they convey knowledge. They help us to laugh and to cry together and share and, of course, to connect. Now, Renee talked about mentoring and belonging, and she was bang on because that's exactly what stories enable us and help us to do. Those stories are going to help us to connect to each other, and I'm going to encourage you to tell your story because someone needs to hear your story. I realized this especially about, I guess it was four years ago. I'm at a Toastmasters group, which is, you know, generally public speaking. There with my club, about 14 or 15 people. And I tell people about something that's recently happened to me, but it's been a struggle all my life and what's been happening with mental challenges and depression. When I finish my talk, I get the congratulations and applause, but someone comes up to me, Julie. She says, I've never been able to tell anyone this before, but my son has a real challenge, a real problem. And I thought I could talk to you. The key is she had never told anyone before. This story was a way for us to connect, but it's also a way for her to start telling her story. Sometimes you just need to be the first person to tell it. And sometimes someone is just waiting for you to do so. Let's face it. But some people say, oh, I don't have any good stories to tell. Stop it, of course you do. Our lives aren't Hollywood blockbusters and that's fine. We don't need to hear about the time you jumped out of a burning airplane or whatever it was. It's those moments of humanity that connect us all that are most important. 
remember someone just overcoming their fear of public speaking. Her name is Victoria, and it was her first time telling her story at a Toastmaster meeting. She gets up to the front, and her papers were, you could hear them rattling like that. Her talk was not going well. Eventually, she just stopped dead, went to the back of the room, and sat down. That was a very awkward moment. With a little bit of encouragement, you could see something change in Victoria, and she came back to the front. And she finished telling her personal story. Not six months later, Victoria is now the president of our Toastmasters Club. So overcoming that moment was very important to her, but it also it was something we could connect with in the audience. Let's face it, there's someone new to Canada who needs to hear about the time that you overcame a language barrier. There is someone who needs to know how you forgave yourself and engaged in self-healing. Or perhaps there's a, a younger adult who just needs to hear when you had that moment when you grew up. Everyone needs to connect through a story. And like any good infomercial, but wait, there's more. Storytelling is good for you as well. I've been reading study upon study, and yes, we know it's good to do storytelling with children, but it also helps us, and it helps our brains and our cognition at every single age. Stories can be sometimes help to help us move through trauma and to overcome challenges that we've had in life. It's good for your brain. It's good to connect with others. And frankly, you can just have fun with it too. Now, here's one of the big things. People often have challenges. They say, well, I'm not a good storyteller. Okay, let me give you three simple little tips to help your storytelling. Because we all know the people who are able to drain every single ounce of fun out of a story, and we don't want to be that person. We can be the person that engages with others. So when you're telling a story, in senses. Think about the five senses and, 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 and emotions as well. If you're talking about a, a summer's evening, we want to smell the sweet grass. We want to see that beautiful sunset. We want to be walking beside you and experiencing your story. Secondly, Details, details, details. The devil is in the details. Absolutely. It's which details you pick. It's not a book report. A story is also not a business report or a case study. If you're talking about the time you met someone, a friend you hadn't seen in 20 years walking down the street, and you start saying, oh, I was walking down 152. No, it was 154, and it was about 3.30. Well, maybe it was about 3 o'clock. You have lost your audience. It might be polite, but you probably zombified them. It's okay. All we need is the details to understand the feelings, emotions, and the crux of the story. Lastly, think of your story as a gift that you're giving to one listener or possibly a huge audience. Is it a thoughtful gift, one that they want to receive, or maybe not? But it's up to you. Having a little forethought before using your stories is very helpful. And something you'll notice when you start to tell stories is something is going to change inside you. I've seen storytellers who are going through a storytelling coaching course. And for like the first six weeks, they have the story that they're telling. And one woman on the seventh week who had been talking about this gardening, it was a one, it was a pleasant enough story. She added one paragraph at the end about her friend who was coping with a life-threatening illness. And the gardening was a metaphor for what her friend was going through. And that just hit. We change when we tell stories, and often, quite honestly, most often, in a positive and life-affirming way. And if you want to get started, hey, of course, you could do it with friends or family. There's courses online. You can, uh, there's meetup groups. There's Toastmasters. Are you ready to give a TED Talk? Do you have an idea that you need to spread to the world? I'm involved in a program called Surrey Shares. We have a storytelling coach and a life skills coach to help people to tell their story. And we professionally record it at the end and post it in something called the Surrey Shares YouTube channel to share with our community because it's about creating a community. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead 
and start telling your story. Someone needs to hear it. And the only bad story you have is the one that's gone untold. Thank you. Thank you, Noel, for the powerful presentation on storytelling. Coming up next, we have a musical performance by Tiller's Folly. For over 20 years, Tiller's Folly has been uniting past with the present as modern day storytellers of lore singing the West's pioneer history to life. From the outset, the band aspired to create acoustic music that is thoughtful, progressive, yet timeless. Music that represents their Pacific coastal home. They set out to preserve a measure of the West colonial heritage in stories and songs. The stars still dancing in your eyes World has many surprises in store for you And you may think you got it all worked out Got my doubts You've only just begun Shine For you, it's gonna be a long, hard time. Now and then you find you think it through that you will get there in your own sweet time. You'll be fine. You've only just begun. Shine. When you shine, I see the world is yours alone to take. When you shine, I'm hopeful for the plans you make. It's true. There's so many things I want for you. I know you'll see. Them through, given half a chance, and you will get there in your own sweet time. You'll be fine, you've only just begun to shine. chance that you will get there in your own sweet time you'll be fine you've only just begun you've only just begun to shine all right thank you so much thank you very much uh, City of Surrey for welcoming us here on October 1st. Of course, uh, National Seniors Day. So, uh, well, here's a little song that, uh, speaking of which, this song goes back to our third album, which is quite a ways back. If you joined our show back then, way back then, uh, you would have heard, uh, well, this is our fourth CD. I think you were right the first time. I think I was right the first time. A little <laughs> song called A River So Wide.
Where the water is deep and the river is wide Never seen it boil and churn till I was swept deep inside What you gonna do when it all sinks in? No one's there to throw you a line and now it's sink or swim in a river so wide Well, I've never been lost in a forest so deep Never stepped such a treacherous path or seen a fall so steep I was standing alone when the wolves closed in If you ever gonna get out of this, you better See you don't trip in a forest so deep And time will grind down the hardest heel When every dog has had its day You're gonna know how it feels Never once dreamed there would come a day When the people I call my friends could just turn, walk away You could go on believing the worst, but then it's all you'll see You, you could spread, spread your rumors, rumors around and point your fat finger at me You know it's all right I'm staring at a clear blue sky So high, never seen it boil and churn till I was swept deep inside. What you gonna do when it all falls in? Boy, you hit rock bottom, boy, you better know how to swim. The river so wide, mm, that river so wide. Better if it's so wide That river's so wide Oh, thanks again. Just like we, we almost knew what we were doing there. All right. Well... Uh, we're, of course, Tilders Folly, those of you just tuning in or, uh, or just introducing yourself to us. Um, from White Rock, British Columbia, on the bass over here is Mr. Lawrence Knight. Doing some singing as well, playing the bass. And, uh, Thank you. Yep. And from North Vancouver. North Vancouver calls this gentleman uh, uh, their own on the electric guitar and the mandolin, Mr. Eric Reed. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm in Maple Ridge, East Maple Ridge. My name is Bruce Coughlin. And uh, again, together we are Tiller's Folly. Next song goes back to our third album. This is absolutely from our third album. Absolutely from, and you were right. And it was an ancient time. It was, it was, a, it was a, an absolutely uh, a long time ago. It was before we actually had cell phones. If you can imagine how barbaric a time. There's a lot of folks imagining how about barbaric a time, but back then, touring, you'd go out for two or three weeks, we'd be touring around with nothing to do while traveling down the highway, but to stare out the window at the awesome natural beauty of this wonderful place we call home. Um, but unfortunately, uh, you, you remained incommunicado to a certain de degree, and uh, uh, you could spend a week or two away from uh, a friend or a loved one and, uh, and never talk to them. So uh, I wrote this song. We were traveling through the north during spring. And it was early enough in spring that the days were kind of warm, the nights. You still wake up in the morning, there'd be a little icy film on top of the, 
on top of the water in the puddles in the parking lot, the uh, outside our motel. So made me think of that. Traveling through the Nass Valley, beautiful place. I wrote this song called A Ripple in Time. One, two, three. On the sun, warm rocks by the river. With the heat of day, pounding in my shoes I lay down on the shore, my heart stricken sore Shake off vagabond blues There's gentle sweet souls in the Northland And a welcome ever I roam Get unkind if I break like a shot for the door. We're still such a long way from home, and this highway feels like no man's land. All I could see is the road still ahead on the crest of a wave. It's all well and fine till you're caught in the wake like a Ripple in time It's a chill rolling in from the mountains And nothing so blue as the sky There's rumors of spring and all living things There's a handshake of every goodbye And this highway feels like no man's land all I could see is the road still ahead On the crest of a wave It's all well and fine Till your heart in the way Like a ripple in time And it feels like a year since I've held you The telephone only reaches halfway I guess these are the dues Doing as you choose Where well, you still get blues, that's the thing And this highway feels like a man's land Not much to do, you just do what you can there's a crest and a wave And it's all left behind It's all memories fade Just like ripples in time On the crest of a wave It's all well and fine Till you're gone in the way Back here, ripple in time Oh, Lawrence Knight on the bass At one time, over a hundred years ago, a hundred and ten years ago, even before, British Columbia could boast the largest electric railway system in all of North America. Now, often when we think of trams or uh, electric trains, we think in terms of uh, metropolitan cities in the United States. We think of New Orleans or San Francisco, even New York perhaps, but at one point, a glowing point in our history, BC had the longest trackage, 
any electric railway in North America. Well, the 1950s came along, more independence, more cars on the road, and the powers that be decided that light rapid transit was an outdated notion. They tore down most of the electric lines, they burnt some of the, uh, the trans uh, interurban railway cars, and for a number of years we were left to our own devices to get around, until came the exposition of 1986 and uh, lots and lots of traffic and, and th that sort of thing and the new powers that be determined that light rapid transit was the wave of the future and they started rebuilding what was the former glory of the BC Electric Railway in a system they call the SkyTrain. Well here we are 40 years later and where that uh, SkyTrain goes all the way out to, to uh, Wally it used to go all the way, over 100 years ago, all the way out to Chilliwack. And the new Millennium Line, or whatever the heck they call it, goes out to the airport. Why, 100 years ago, you could catch an electric train all the way to Steveston. So it just proves what Joni Mitchell said in her song, don't it always seem to go, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. We're going to hop aboard the BC Electric Railway Line. I'll get your tickets ready. Come board the 1402 in the electric railway line. Thirteen cents in cash fare paid on the electric railway line. Took about transfer and receipt. Took no time to take my seat. Kicked off the shoes. Kicked up my feet on the electric railway line. Here are Stewart and Sinclair along the Interman line. Then through Barrow's Kid McLean on the Interman line. Then we stopped in Jackman County line. Coughlin, Warwick, and Jardine, Meridian, Sullivan, Island Kings on the Electric Railway line. All along the Interman line, you could hear the motor with the line. Picking up the tracks and she's right on time. You could smoke those capstan cigarettes out on the observation car. No, they're just ten cents a packet by the Hastings Depot yard. You could thumb through the buzzer in the best of you, or you could be through the farm service news. I'm telling you, you just can't lose on the electric railway line.
the story of the BC Electric Railway Line. And what day is it today? What day is it today? It's October 1st, National Senior Citizens Day. So uh, here's a shout out to, to all those folks who, uh, who may have ridden at one point or another upon the BC Electric Railway. Well, I've been hanging around this, uh, this area quite a ways myself, quite a time. Uh, being I grew up in, uh, in Coquitlam myself and uh, spent many hours uh, along the banks of the Pitt River. And uh, for those who, uh, who know the Pitt River and, and, and the Pitt River Bridge in particular, even these days, I, I cross it maybe a half dozen times in a week and it never disappoints. I look to the north, the beautiful fjord-like mountains plunging into a beautiful, uh, what is possibly one of the world's largest tidal lakes, Pitt Lake. And uh, as a young kid, as a young teenager, my friends and I used to, used to spend our evenings down there building bonfires and passing around um, hot chocolate, as uh, teenagers are wont to do around uh, campfires. So uh, it's always held a very romantic place in my heart. And uh, I wanted to write a song of tribute about the Pitt River. But what uh, daunted me most was the rhyme, the rhythm scheme, the rhyming. Pit. Hmm. Well then, as occasion would have it, I was going through uh, an, an, an old uh, nautical chart, an old uh, British naval chart of our coastline. And as I followed it up the Fraser River, I looked and at the stretch where the Pitt River uh, runs up towards Pitt Lake, that stretch of, of uh, territory is called Chatham Reach. And I thought to myself, now that's something that rolls off the tongue. So I, I also mentioned the story of Slumac, and uh, a lot of old timers will remember that legend. Slumac was a First Nations trapper who committed murder on the banks of the Pitt River at the confluence of the Little Alouette. And uh, for it, uh, Slumac walked to the gallows in the 1880s. Now, he had it in his possession at the time, a great degree of gold. And many people have speculated over the years that old Slumac had a special mine up in the Pitt River area. And many, many people have chased after that golden treasure. And many have not returned. That is the legend of Slumac. And you'll hear that referenced in this song called The Chatham Reach. Along Chatham Reach, my memory wanders still. Gaze upon the splendor, her shoreline and her peaks. Painter's dream of heaven, to my soul she speaks. Spring breaks through down on Chatham Reach. Ever since my younger days, I have loved your misty shores. Stare out from the tall grass, smell the sweetness on your breeze. Night around a fire, we would gather on the beach. Friends I knew down on Chatham Reach. And ever steeped in mystery, your legends would unfold. Star Wars men who met their end in search of Slumac's gold. Mystery, and it costs me. 
Now winter brings its bitter chill. My breath hangs in the air. Frost has turned the tall grass to the color of my hair. My time is done, my race is run, but the longing I have felt lingers still down on Chatham Reach. Thank you very much. I hope many of you uh, share my love for the, uh, that stretch of uh, land. All right. Well, the next story. Not for, uh, this is for mature audiences. So uh, if you have any grandkids or great-grandkids uh, watching in, have them cover their ears. This is a true story of murder, most foul upon the high seas. It's a true story, and it happened during possibly the darkest time in North American history. I'm referring to, of course, to Prohibition. The Olmstead Act of the United States that denied men and women the simple pleasure of life at the end of the day, a fine glass of wine with a meal, or that grateful gasp of ale at the end of a hard day's work. It was very dark time. At a time when some of even our most law-abiding citizens were lured by the opportunity of making easy money, transporting contraband over the various straits and narrows that separate our two great nations. Such was the Barrel G, fishing boat term run runner, its captain William Gillis at the helm, his young teenage son, William Jr., as his crew, they set out one night for cover of darkness from Sydney Harbor, bound for Port Townsend, Washington, with a boatload of rot gut whiskey. Mm. Oh, anyhow, I digress. Uh, the next morning, the barrel G was found floating down the, the Harrow Strait, its decks splattered in blood. No sign of its captain, his crew or the whiskey. The BC Provincial Police hauled the Barrel G into Victoria Harbor where they went about their investigation and in the galley on the table they found a camera. Upon developing the film in said camera, they discovered pictures of three culprits. Disguised as US Customs agents, they boarded the Barrel G, shot its captain, and beat his young son to death. Three men stood trial. Two men walked to the gallows. And the ringleader, one Owen Baker, was recorded to have said, stood upon the scaffold, the neck, the noose around his neck, cast a menacing eye towards the hangman, and to have said, step on it, buddy. I haven't got all. The bitter end. In days of prohibition, through the tides of the hero street, from boats ran illicit cargoes under cover of the night, a small time operator. Facing danger at each turn From the pirate and hijacker Coast Guard and the Revenue It falls the keeper of Turnpoint Light Who first found the barrel G A trip upon the morning tide A grisly sight to see down to a cavern, sight of blood in every place. What had become of our cargo and her crew? He could not find a trace. But if, if you sail on the runner's road, 
there's danger you will find all the ships that mark these waters are of humankind let there be no illusion oh on this you can depend it's just a quick step from the gallows on your way to the bitter end Wash, Noah Baker, and Charlie Morris made a plan that they would rob the whiskey runners disguised as U.S. customs men. So they combed the San Juan Islands in search of opportunity until just off Sydney Island. That's where they spied the barrel tree. They shot William Gillis where he stood And they knew that he was dead They cut young Winnie Junior down They blow to his head And if you sail on rum, runner's road There's danger you will find For oh, the sharks that lurk these waters And on this you can depend It's just a quick step from the gallows And on your way to the bitter end For his crime, Harry Swash, Noah Baker, were to pay with their lives. They would say on a sea of sorrow, we'll hang them for a friend. It's just a quick step from the gallows. You're on your way to the bitter end. true story. All right, well, the next song is a true story as well, from my own personal perspective. A uh, little song of philosophical significance. I uh, wrote this song. It was uh, recorded by two of my heroes. Um, so John Cowan of uh, Newgrass Revival and Doobie Brothers fame, along with uh, Rodney Crowell, made a duet of this song, and it's uh, one of my favorites. I'm still raking in the royalties. <laughs> Who 
highway roads to Beckham with the promise of adventure and the stories yet unsung. Stories yet unsung and the dreams that fail a lifetime are the treasures to be saved. There's precious time to spare between the cradle and the grave. September Seasons flying past me now Winter's coming on But I'll feel a stab of pain And regret when I remember All the dreams I had wished for And the things I haven't done Things I haven't done sound of gentle laughter for the dreams I wish for and things I haven't done things I haven't done well thank you so much well I'm afraid that brings us just about to the end of our uh, end of our show, Tiller's Follies, we celebrate our 24th year as a, as a performing act, and, uh, and we're going we're gonna to finish shop and uh, set you off here from the, the beautiful uh, Surrey Arts Centre uh, and Theatre. What a beautiful uh, venue. It's great that they can keep uh, the lights on it for you while this, uh, this world has been turning around, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all in, uh, in the new year. Next year, we'll, uh, we'll find ourselves uh, congregated in this beautiful uh, theater. So, uh, on behalf of myself, Bruce Coughlin, Lawrence Knight, and Eric Reed, Tiller's Folly, I'd like to send you off with. Now here is the story of poor Jack O'Connor, and the tale that surrounds his untimely demise. Submitted as fact And just one like example So gruesome a history Read Islands Comprised The wind weathered rocks on the coast of a Frida Island Guard out the mystery of her own tragic lore For it's said to this day that the ghost of Frida Island Appear in the mist of her desolate shores Jack Meyer was a blackguard, a thief and a braggart He stole, stole the whiskey from the sloop in the bay and the tailor come loggers of twenty-six bottles Well, little they knew what a price would be paid After a weekend of two-fisted drinking Fires ran amok with an old forty-four And a wager turned sour by Monday's wee hours Poor Jack O'Connor lay dead on the floor How the wind mother rocks on the coast of Island, guard o'er the mystery of her own tragic lore. For it's said to this day that the ghosts of Reed Island appear in the mist of her desolate shores. The magistrate came, Michael Manson by name, who, along with Brad Passy, performed the inquest. All who witnessed the act testified to facts as a warrant was issued for Jack Meyer's arrest. A posse was sworn in and posted reward While well, they sailed from the Nymo on the Joan and the Stell Got well, caught up with Myers all up in Putin That they brought him for trial His story to tell hey! Both for 
from the far reaching Boys are stopped the fence at the end of the day Jack Myers was sentenced to a lifelong in prison for killing O'Connor and a blind drunken rage How the wind weathered rocks on the coast of Frida Island Guard of the mystery of her own tragic lore For it's set to the state of the coast of Frida Island And here in the midst of her desolate shore How the wind weathered rocks on the coast of Frida Island Guard of the mystery of her own tragic it's set to this day that the ghosts of Fleet Island appear in the midst of her desolate shore. What an amazing performance by Tillers Folly. Now, a message from our sponsor, Chartwell Retirement Residence. She was, she was a wonderful person. And honestly, like people say this about their moms, but I, I, I truly felt like she was my best friend. My mom's name uh, was Lois Skinner. She was born in the 20s, so she was, um, she was in some ways really proper. Like she's the kind of person who, she'd wear gloves, right? She had beautiful penmanship and she'd write um, lovely thank you notes and taught me to, you know, you always, you always do something like that. You write someone a personal note. Um, so in some ways she was, she could be a little bit formal, just how she was raised but she was full of fun. And the thing that I remember probably the most is that she was always up for an adventure. And she loved having adventures with me and my family. Because my, my dad passed away in his 70s, she had over 20 years with her girls and her grandchildren. But as my mom aged, it, it became more difficult for her because of her mobility. She had some mobility issues. So she would have started off, she had a cane, and then she had a walker. Um, and she was a very independent person. And then, you know, my mom had a fall. And she was really fortunate that she didn't break anything. She didn't break a hip or an arm or anything like that. But it was, it was um, enough of a fall to I think, make her realize that she needed to think about retirement living. She would actually say though, once she moved into the retirement residence, um, that she, she should have actually gone earlier. And, and she realized that. She was really pleased that she had this little apartment and um, uh, she could choose when she wanted to eat and who she wanted to eat with and um, uh, what activities interested her and, and which ones didn't. So she did still have a lot of independence. And I think even though maybe she understood because she was my mom, um, she, she was still, um, I would say, very pleasantly surprised to understand that um, she was going to have autonomy. So many of the things that people have enjoyed in life are what we focus on in retirement living. We are proud to honor National Seniors Day at Chartwell Retirement Residences. To celebrate with us, pick up your complimentary goodie bag between October 1st and 4th at one of the following locations. Thank you for joining us for the National Seniors Day celebration, and we hope you enjoyed the program. Learn more about the City of Surrey's programs, services, and resources available on our website at surrey.ca/seniors.